Lots of people stream with a two PC streaming setup and like me a lot of people just had an old gaming PC and they wanted to upgrade so they turned their old gaming PC into the stream PC and then their new gaming PC is the thing they want to play games on but connecting those two things and making them work with a stream can feel like an absolute nightmare. So in this video I wanted to very quickly explain to you how do you hook up two different PCs to be able to stream with the streaming PC doing all of the encoding work and then the gaming PC just running your game but still have all of the audio that you need coming through your headphones. If you have any comments about any of this, please let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer as many as I can. So what we'll do is very quickly just make some shapes up here and we'll say this is going to be your gaming PC and then I'm going to need lots of space here because there's going to be lots of cables and then this is going to be your streaming PC. Now in reality you probably want your PCs to be quite close together in physical space. This is something I didn't really think about when I was first setting things up but lots of products come with quite short cables and while you often can find longer cables to move stuff around it's a pain especially when you get something new so I think it's really helpful to have them within a meter or two of each other. Now obviously you're going to have monitors connected to these. Now I personally just have one one monitor for each thing so I have my gaming monitor which is the one that will have the um, you know higher resolution higher frame rate and stuff like that and then my streaming monitor that I actually have in portrait orientation but we don't need to worry about that for this that I just use an old monitor that I had as 1080p and 60 frames second. Now DisplayPort is a technology that's been around for a very long time obviously and it's really really good because it will let you send an image that has a very high refresh rate and resolution to your monitor. Newer generations of HDMI can do the same thing but I don't think there's many people who are going to have a graphics card and a monitor that are capable of doing HDMI 2.1. If you do have that then brilliant I'd probably use that but if not you're probably going to be using DisplayPort which doesn't send over any audio that's the important thing to remember streaming pc connecting to the stream monitor literally doesn't matter how you're doing that i use hdmi um, and the reason for that is i do want that audio to be able to move over but that's about it now obviously the big problem for a lot of people starting out your first big issue everyone can sort out this bit is how do you get the picture from the gaming pc over to the streaming pc i use something called an elgato hds plus that's my capture card and the way I've connected them up I have the gaming PC connected to that via HDMI so just HDMI and then I have the Eldorado HD S Plus connected to my streaming PC via USB. Now there is a pass-through on the Elgato H Plus which would let you send that picture back to your gaming monitor if you want to. I personally don't use that because it's always going to increase, uh, it's always going to add a tiny bit of latency, there's always going to be a tiny bit of delay and since your gaming PC is connected to your gaming monitor anyway, you don't really need it. If you want to connect a console or something like that to your capture card, like an Xbox and I have my Series X on my desk as well, then you'd want to use the pass through going back to the gaming monitor. So actually we can add that on, I'll just show you how I would do it. Then I would connect that one to this via HDMI. I need to swap those cables out, like it doesn't have two inputs. You can get them that do have two inputs. You can get capture cards that have more than one input. They have one that has four, I think at the moment, which is crazy, but I just swap them out. And then I have this one going all the way around here and then over to my gaming monitor and that's using HDMI. Right, so you're with me so far. So it looks a little bit complicated, but once you've got it set up, it's fairly easy. That your gaming PC is creating the gaming image that you care about. That's going to your game monitor so you can play the game. Then you have a capture card that will be taking the HDMI version of it. And to get that picture to be going from to both your game monitor and Elgato HDS Plus, on Windows, you can just clone display. So you set this up as your primary display, and then you clone display to your HDMI. It will come up as a HDMI monitor, basically, in Windows. You clone a display to that, and that'll send it over there. Because this one's limited to 1080p60, that's the signal that it's going to send out there, whereas it's going to send out whatever resolution and frame rate you want for this one. This does cause other problems. So things like G-Sync isn't going to work if you're trying to send a display to two different places because of the way G-Sync works. That just doesn't make any sense for it. 
it. So you are going to have problems with tearing or you're going to have to use V-Sync, which is something I've talked about a little bit before. Then you have your Elgato HDS Plus will connect via USB to your streaming PC. And then I just use OBS software. I don't use any of the Elgato software at all, but you can use any kind of video capture software. And this will just appear as a video input, like a webcam would or something like that. And that will go to your stream. And then you can use OBS or whatever broadcasting software you want to use, although I heartily recommend OBS. And then that will like obviously display on a streaming monitor, whatever you need to with chat and alerts and everything like that. And you'll also be able to actually stream from there. The really important thing about this setup is that your gaming PC is only having to create the image for the game and not having to do any other work. The streaming PC is doing all of the encoding and recording and things like that. Now, I personally sometimes record stuff on my stream PC when I want to have stuff from the stream recorded on there as well, like my webcam or something like that. And we'll talk about the camera in a second. And then sometimes I record on my gaming PC using Nvidia Shadow Play because it doesn't have much of an impact on your frame rate at all. And it means that I can have it at a higher resolution because it's not going through the capture card first. And I think it's really good practice when you're streaming to try and record things in two different places at once if you can, because you've got a backup. Inevitably, things go wrong when you record. Sometimes the recording gets messed up. Sometimes it stops early. Sometimes you forget to start it going. And it's an absolute lifesaver to have that recording somewhere else. So the next thing to include is a camera. So I have a camera, I have a Sony ZV-1, which is a proper camera. If you have a USB camera, you can just connect it via USB to your streaming PC. But I have my camera, and then that's connected via mini HDMI. Actually, we'll put the mini HDMI bit on first. We'll put the actual cam link on. So that's connected to a cam link. That's connected via mini HDMI, which most cameras will have some kind of output like that. Most modern cameras will have a mini HDMI output. Sometimes you might need to buy an adapter. The Sony ZV-1 is awesome for stuff like that. It's got loads of features that are really useful for doing stuff like streaming. And then that's connected via that with USB as well. So this is basically all of the visual stuff is connected via this using this display now the next problem is audio and this is where things get a little bit messier and i realize that this picture is already very messy but trust me it gets messier so i use something called a go xlr which i'm sure lots of you will have heard of i use a go xlr mini now the go xlr is an awesome bit of kit but it is a little bit confusing. Like it is a little bit of a difficult thing to do and lots of people will have it set up in lots of different ways. So my Go XLR Mini is connected, first of all, to a mic. I use an Audio-Technica XLR mic. You can use a USB mic, but it's a little bit more of a pain. It causes a couple of other small problems. So if there is a way that you can use an XLR mic, if you're going the Go XLR route, I think that's a very good idea. That is connected to the Go XLR MIDI using an XLR cable, which is a big chunky speaker ca cable. And then the Go XLR Mini is actually connected to my gaming PC using a USB cable. This is where we start getting a few maybe discrepancies where other people will do this differently. Some people will have their Go XLR Mini connected to their streaming PC. I prefer having this my gaming PC because I run Discord on the gaming PC. So the audio that I need going to the gaming PC is on there. Now the reason I run Discord on my gaming PC rather than on my streaming PC is because sometimes when I want to have those recordings, those high quality recordings, I want to be able to have all of the different audio. So not just me talking, but my party talking Working as well. So the Go XLR Mini is connected to the microphone of an XLR and then back to the gaming PC with USB. And then all of the different audio outputs from my gaming PC, so my game and Discord chat, and if I say had music running in the background or anything like that, all of that will go through to the Go XLR Mini, if that makes sense. Then I have an aux out connection to my streaming PC. Now, this is just using the line out on a Go XLR Mini. It does cause a few problems. You need to use this little, like, I think it's like an induction loop device or something like that. It doesn't cost very much, but it stops it buzzing and things like that. Um, and so I use the aux out from the Go XLR Mini. This has all of the sound that's controlled via my gaming PC, goes to my streaming PC, ready to be streamed. So all of that sound is ready to go out as like, it's been processed it's had all of the different levels mixed and everything like that so my stream pc only actually has that one input only needs that one audio input it doesn't need any other devices at all my alerts and everything are actually running on obs on the streaming pc and on my gaming pc but set up in such a way that the go xlr doesn't hear the ones on the game pc so it doesn't double up 
Um, that's not an ideal setup, but I can't think of a better one at the moment. You could have a line out going from the streaming PC into the line in of the Go XLR Mini, um, but I reserve that for having the Xbox, which sometimes I will connect the Xbox to this using AUX as well. And that's how I get audio from the Xbox to the Go XLR. Then the final piece of kind of the essential puzzle is my headphones. So I also have headphones and they are just connected to the Go XLR. This is my headphones and I have headphones, good headphones. I have them connected to the Go XLR just with an aux cable from the aux out. Now, the reason for that is you, I do have wireless headphones and some of you might have seen I've got the Arctis Pro Steel Series. I don't know what they're called. The wireless ones they are very, very nice headphones. But if you want to try and use them with the wireless stuff set up, it causes extra problems with delay. You've got an extra processing thing in it. If you've got an aux cable going directly from the Go XLR, it makes everything latency free or as close to that as it possibly can be. So that's why I use aux connecting my headphones to my Go XLR Mini. And then that means everything that the Go XLR Mini can hear, I can hear, and you can even set up things. So stuff that you don't want sent to the streaming stream PC, like my alerts from the gaming PC, can be routed through to my headphones, but not to the streaming PC, which is super useful. And I'll show you the routing now, which I have on the Go XLR. This is an incredible bit of software that you get with the Go XLR, and it's really one of the things that makes it worth the money. Now, the last part of the puzzle for this really is my stream deck, which I strongly suggest you use um, if you're streaming, I think it's a really helpful bit of kit. You can get free versions on your phone and stuff like that. I have my stream deck connected to my um, streaming PC just because I use it to control OBS more than anything. So I use it to switch scenes. I use it to add sources or take away sources. Like if I don't want my webcam in it because I'm recording a cutscene or something, I can just press a button to do that. You can also use it to control Twitch. You can use it to take screenshots, all stuff like that. It's incredibly helpful. So that's just connected over to my streaming PC via USB. So I haven't included on here keyboards and mice. I have keyboards and mice for both of them, but I do use my main one. And then I have a little button on my mouse that I can press using Input Director, which is an awesome piece of software that lets me switch my keyboard and mouse to control in my gaming PC or my streaming PC. That is super useful. And I also have a foot switch that I sometimes use to control things like Discord. That's connected to my gaming PC via USB. So I can do things like muting Discord when I need to or muting myself so I don't annoy people in party when I'm talking talking to chat, stuff like that, which I should use probably more than I actually do. So this is a very complicated setup. I understand it's a very complicated setup. But if you have any questions about it, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. It's quite a complicated thing to do. And all of this has kind of come about through experimentation, finding things that work for me and my setup and my equipment without having to spend too much extra money. So if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, turn your notifications on, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.